Good morning, and welcome to Third Church, New York City. We're happy to have you here with us today. Let's begin by singing hymn number 297. I'll read the first verse. Science, the angel with the flaming sword, God's gift, the glory of the risen Lord, light of the world in whose light we shall see Father and perfect Son, blessed unity. Hymn number 297. I'll read from the Bible. Isaiah. Behold, the Lord God will come with strong hand, and his arms shall and his arm shall rule for him. Behold, his reward is with him, and his work before him. He shall feed his flock like a shepherd. He shall gather the lambs with his arm, and carry them in his bosom, and shall gently lead those that are with young.
Let's pray for the congregation, first in silence. Then we'll pray together the Lord's Prayer. I'll read the spiritual interpretation given in the Christian Science textbook. Our Father, which art in heaven. Our Father, Mother, God, all harmonious. Hallowed be thy name. Adorable one. Thy kingdom come. Thy kingdom is come. Thou art ever present. Thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Enable us to know as in heaven, so on earth. God is omnipotent, supreme, Give us this day our daily bread. Give us grace for today. Feed the famished affections. And forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And love is reflected in love. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. And God leadeth us not into temptation, but delivereth us from sin, disease, and death. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. For God is infinite, all power, all life, truth, love, over all and all. Let's sing hymn number 108. Here, O oh my Lord, I'd see thee face to face. Here would I touch and handle things unseen. Here grasp with firmer hand the eternal grace, and all my weariness upon thee lean. Hymn number 108.
This church is a branch of the Mother Church, the first church of Christ Scientist in Boston, Massachusetts. We hold Sunday services at 11 a.m. and Wednesday testimony meetings at 7.30 p.m. The Wednesday meeting includes singing hymns, reading from the Bible and the Christian Science textbook, and the opportunity to hear how people are living what they are learning from their study of Christian science. We also have services in Spanish, Sundays at 1 p.m. and Wednesdays at 5.30 p.m. All services are held online and in person. We thank you for observing social distancing and for wearing a mask. Third Church offers Sunday school classes online and in person for children and teens. These free one-hour classes are held each Sunday. At Sunday school, students learn how much God loves them and cares for them. They also learn about the Bible characters and lessons and the healing power of truth. If you know of children and teens who may be interested, please send us an email, thirdchurch at thirdchurchnyc. Dot com. Third Church's reading room is open, and all are welcome. The reading room provides a quiet place for prayer and study. Here, you may also purchase books and recordings on Christian science. The reading room has the latest issues of the Christian Science Monitor, an award-winning international news weekly available to read or purchase. Reading room hours are Monday through Friday, 1 to 4 p.m. Third Church's Easter Talk by Dr. Barry Huff, titled Resilient Faith and God's Embracing and God's Embrace During Crisis, can now be replayed on our website at thirdchurchnyc.com. The solo, sung by Jenny Lynn Stewart, is titled Reflections from Micah, the music and the words based on Micah, six, are by Joseph M. Martin. Thank you. 
Thank you. Friends, the Bible and the Christian Science textbook are our only preachers. We shall now read scriptural texts and their correlative passages from our denominational textbook. These comprise our sermon. The canonical writings together with the word of our textbook, corroborating and explaining the Bible texts in their spiritual import and application to all ages, past, present, and future constitute a, a, constitute a sermon undivorced from truth, uncontaminated and unfettered by human hypotheses and divinely authorized. Today's sermon can be found on page 36 of the full text edition of the Christian Science Quarterly. The subject is Doctrine of Atonement. The golden text is from John. Behold the Lamb of God. The responsive reading is from Isaiah. How beautiful upon the mountains are the feet of him that bringeth good tidings, that publisheth peace, that bringeth good tidings of good, that publisheth salvation, and saith unto Zion, Thy God reigneth. Break forth into joy, sing together, ye waste places of Jerusalem. For the Lord hath comforted his people. He hath redeemed Jerusalem. The Lord hath made bare his holy arm in the eyes of all the nations, and all the ends of the earth shall see the salvation of our God. Who hath believed our report, and to whom is the arm of the Lord revealed? He is despised and rejected of men, a man of sorrows and acquainted with grief. But he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him, and with his stripes we are healed. He was oppressed, and he was afflicted, yet he opened not his mouth. He is brought as a lamb to the slaughter, and as a sheep before her shearers is dumb. So he openeth not his mouth. By his knowledge shall my righteous servant justify many, for he shall bear their iniquities. Behold my servant whom I, whom I uphold, mine elect in whom my soul delighteth. I have put my spirit upon him. He shall bring forth judgment to the Gentiles. The following citations comprise our sermon. The Bible. Micah, wherewith shall I come before the Lord and bow myself before the high God? Shall I come before him with burnt offerings, with calves of a year old? 
He hath showed thee, O man, what is good. And what doth the Lord require of thee but to do justly and to love mercy and to walk humbly with thy God? Psalms. The sacrifices of God are a broken spirit, a broken and a contrite heart, O God, thou wilt not despise. Hebrews. For the law, having a shadow of good things to come, and not the very image of the things, can never, with those sacrifices which they offered year by year continually, make the comers thereunto perfect. For it is not possible that the blood of bulls and of goats should take away sins. John. The law was given by Moses, but grace and truth came by Jesus Christ. And this is the record of John, when the Jews sent priests and Levites from Jerusalem to ask him, Who art thou? And he confessed, and denied not, but confessed, I am not the Christ. The next day John seeth Jesus coming unto him, and saith, Behold the Lamb of God, which taketh away the sin of the world. I'll read from the Science and Health with Key to the Scriptures by Mary Baker Eddy. Lamb of God, the spiritual idea of love, self-immolation, innocence, and purity, sacrifice. Jesus' teaching and practice of truth involves such a sacrifice as makes us admit its principle to be love. This was the precious import of our master's sinless career and of his demonstration of power over death. Our master taught no mere theory, doctrine, or belief. It was the divine principle of all real being which he taught and practiced. Atonement is the exemplification of man's unity with God, whereby man reflects divine truth, life, and love. Jesus of Nazareth taught and demonstrated man's oneness with the Father, and for this we owe him endless homage. His mission was both individual and collective. He did life's work aright not only in justice to himself, but in mercy to mortals to show them how to do theirs, but not to do it for them, nor to relieve them of a single responsibility. The scientific unity which exists between God and man must be brought out in life practice, and God's will must be universally done. Matthew. Then spake Jesus to the multitude and to his disciples, be not ye called rabbi, for one is your master, even Christ, and all ye are brethren. And call no man your father upon the earth, for one is your father, which is in heaven. Luke. And it came to pass afterward that he went throughout every city and village, preaching and showing the glad tidings of the kingdom of God, and the twelve were with him. And certain women, which had been healed of evil spirits and infirmities. Mary, called Magdalene, out of whom went seven devils. And Joanna, the wife of Chusa, Herod's steward. And Susanna, and many others which ministered unto him of their substance. John. Then came the Jews round about him, and said unto him, How long dost thou make us to doubt? If thou be the Christ, tell us plainly. Jesus answered them, I told you, and ye believed not. The works that I do in my Father's name, they bear witness of me. My sheep hear my voice, and I know them, and they follow me. And I give unto them eternal life, and they shall never perish neither shall any man pluck them out of my hand. My Father, which gave them me, is greater than all, 
and no man is able to pluck them out of my Father's hand. I and my Father are one. Christ is the true idea voicing good, the divine message from God to men speaking to the human consciousness. As Paul says, there is one God and one mediator between God and men, the man Christ Jesus. Jesus demonstrated Christ. He proved that Christ is the divine idea of God, the Holy Ghost, or Comforter, revealing the divine principle, love, and leading into all truth. He expressed the highest type of divinity which a fleshly form could express in that age. Into the real and ideal man, the fleshly element cannot enter. Thus it is that Christ illustrates the coincidence or spiritual agreement between God and man in his image. That saying of our master, I and my father are one, separated him from the scholastic theology of the rabbis. His better understanding of God was a rebuke to them. He knew of but one mind and laid no claim to any other. Explaining and demonstrating the way of divine science, he became the way of salvation to all who accepted his word. From him, mortals may learn how to escape from evil. The real man being linked by science to his maker, mortals need only turn from sin and lose sight of mortal selfhood to find Christ, the real man, and his relation to God, and to recognize the divine sonship. As a drop of water is one with the ocean, a ray of light one with the sun, even so, God and man, father and son, are one in being. Man and woman, as coexistent and eternal with God, forever reflect in glorified quality the infinite father, mother, God. Matthew. And Jesus went forth and saw a great multitude and was moved with compassion toward them, and he healed their sick. And behold, there was a man which had his hand withered. And they asked him, saying, Is it lawful to heal on the Sabbath days that they might accuse him? And he said unto them, What man shall there be among you that shall have one sheep, and if it fall into a pit on the Sabbath day, Will he not lay hold on it and lift it out? How much then is a man better than a sheep? Wherefore, it is lawful to do well on the Sabbath days. Then saith he to the man, Stretch forth thine hand. And he stretched it forth, and it was restored whole like as the other. Then the Pharisees went out and held a counsel against him how they might destroy him. But when Jesus knew it, he withdrew himself from thence, and great multitudes followed him, and he healed them all. Ephesians. Be ye therefore followers of God as dear children, and walk in love as Christ also hath loved us, and hath given himself for us an offering and a sacrifice to God for a sweet-smelling savor. Jesus aided in reconciling man to God by giving man a truer sense of love, the divine principle of Jesus' teachings, and his truer sense of love, and this truer sense of love, redeems man from the law of matter, sin, and death by the law of spirit, the law of divine love. The man of sorrows best understood the nothingness of material life and intelligence, and the mighty actuality of all-inclusive God, good. These were the two cardinal points of mind healing, or Christian science, which armed him with love. The highest earthly representative of God, speaking of human ability to reflect divine power, prophetically said to his disciples, speaking not for their day only, but for all time, 
He that believeth on me, the works that I do shall he do also. And these signs shall follow them that believe. It is neither science nor truth which acts through blind belief, nor is it the human understanding of the divine healing principle as manifested in Jesus, whose humble prayers were deep and conscientious protests of truth, of man's likeness to God, and of man's unity with truth and love. By the truthful arguments you employ, and especially by the spirit of truth and love which you entertain, you will heal the sick. Speak the truth to every form of error, tumors, ulcers, tubercles, inflammation, pain, deformed joints, our waking dream shadows, dark images of mortal thought, which flee before the light of truth. He to whom the arm of the Lord is revealed will believe our report and rise into newness of life with regeneration. This is having part in the atonement. This is the understanding in which Jesus suffered and triumphed. John, greater love hath no man than this, that a man lay down his life for his friends. Romans. God commendeth his love toward us, in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. For if, when we were enemies, we were reconciled to God by the death of his Son, much more, being reconciled, we shall be saved by his life. And not only so, but we also joy in God through our Lord Jesus Christ, by whom we have now received the atonement. First Peter, ye know that ye were not redeemed with corruptible things as silver and gold from your vain conversation received by tradition from your fathers, but with the precious blood of Christ as of a lamb without blemish and without spot. Acts. God, having raised up his son, Jesus, sent him to bless you in turning away every one of you from his iniquities. That he might liberally pour his dear bought treasures into empty or sin-filled human storehouses was the inspiration of Jesus intense human sacrifice. In witness of his divine commission, he presented the proof that life, truth, and love heal the sick and the sinning and triumph over death through mind, not matter. This was the highest proof he could have offered of divine love. <clears throat> the spiritual essence of blood is sacrifice. The efficacy of Jesus' spiritual offering is infinitely greater than can be expressed by our sense of human blood. The material blood of Jesus was no more efficacious to cleanse from sin when it was shed upon the accursed tree than when it was flowing in his veins as he went daily about his father's business. Jesus taught the way of life by demonstration that we may understand how this divine principle heals the sick, casts out error, and triumphs over death. Implicit faith in the teacher and all the emotional love we can bestow on him will never alone make us imitators of him. We must go and do likewise, else we are not improving the great blessings which our master worked and suffered to bestow upon us. That God's wrath should be vented upon his beloved son is divinely unnatural. Such a theory is man-made. The atonement is a hard problem in theology, but its scientific explanation is that suffering is an error of sinful sense, which truth destroys, and that eventually both sin and suffering will fall at the feet of everlasting love. 
we acknowledge Jesus' atonement as the evidence of divine efficacious love, unfolding man's unity with God through Christ Jesus, the way shower. And we acknowledge that man is saved through Christ, through truth, life, and love, as demonstrated by the Galilean prophet in healing the sick and overcoming sin and death. Galatians. God forbid that I should glory, save in the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ, by whom the world is crucified unto me, and I unto the world. Hebrews. Let us lay aside every weight and the sin which doth so easily beset us, and let us run with patience the race that is set before us, looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and is set down at the right hand of the throne of God. Self-abnegation, by which we lay down all for truth or Christ in our warfare against error, is a rule in Christian science. We must resolve to take up the cross and to go forth with honest hearts to work and watch for wisdom, truth, and love. If truth is overcoming error in your daily walk and conversation, you can finally say, I have fought a good fight. I have kept the faith because you're a better man. This is having our part in the atonement with truth and love. If the disciple is advancing spiritually, he is striving to enter in. He constantly turns away from material sense and looks towards the imperishable things of spirit. If honest, he will be in earnest from the start and gain a little each day in the right direction till at last he finishes his course with joy. Revelation. Behold, a door was opened in heaven, and immediately I was in the Spirit. And behold, a throne was set in heaven, and one sat on the throne. And I saw in the right hand of him that sat on the throne a book, written within and on the backside, sealed with seven seals. And I beheld, and lo, in the midst of the throne and of the four beasts, and in the midst of the elders, stood a lamb, as it had been slain, having seven horns and seven eyes, which are the seven spirits of God sent forth into all the earth. And he came and took the book out of the right hand of him that sat upon the throne. And when he had taken the book, the four beasts and four and twenty elders fell down before the lamb, having every one of them harps and golden vials full of odors, which are the prayers of saints. And they sung a new song, saying, Thou art worthy to take the book and to open the seals thereof, for thou wast slain and hast redeemed us to God by thy blood out of every kindred and tongue and people and nation, and has made us unto our God kings and priests, and we shall reign on the earth. And every creature which is in heaven and on the earth and under the earth, and such as are in the sea, and all that are in them, heard I, saying, Blessing and honor and glory and power be unto him that sitteth upon the throne and unto the Lamb forever and ever. Innocence and truth overcome guilt and error. Ever since the foundation of the world, ever since error would establish material belief, evil has tried to slay the Lamb, but science is able to destroy this lie called evil. The scripture Thou hast been faithful over a few things. I will make thee ruler over many, is literally fulfilled when we are conscious of the supremacy of truth by which the nothingness of error is seen 
and we know that the nothingness of error is in proportion to its wickedness. He that touches the hem of Christ's robe and masters his mortal beliefs, animality and hate, rejoices in the proof of healing in a sweet and certain sense that God is love. For victory over a single sin, we give thanks and magnify the Lord of hosts. What shall we say of the mighty conquest over all sin? A louder song, sweeter than has ever before reached high heaven, now rises clearer and nearer to the great heart of Christ. For the accuser is not there. And love sends forth her primal and everlasting strain. Glory be to God and peace to the struggling hearts. Christ hath rolled away the stone from the door of human hope and faith, and through the revelation and demonstration of life in God, hath elevated them to possible at one moment with the spiritual idea of man and his divine principle, love. <coughs> During the offertory, if you would like to make a donation, please place your offering in the pouches on either side of the congregation, observing social distancing. Or consider making a donation online at thirdchurchnyc.com. Let's sing hymn number 263. Only God can bring us gladness. Only God can give us peace. Joys are vain that end in sadness. Joy divine shall never cease. Mid the shade of want and sorrow, undisturbed, our hearts rejoice. Patient, wait the brighter morrow. Faithful, heed the Father's voice. Hymn number 263.
the scientific statement of being from the Christian Science textbook. There is no life, truth, intelligence, nor substance in matter. All is infinite mind and its infinite manifestation, for God is all in all. Spirit is immortal truth. Matter is mortal error. Spirit is the real and eternal. Matter is the unreal and temporal. The spirit is God, and man is his image and likeness. Therefore, man is not material. He is spiritual. And the correlative scripture from 1 John. Behold, what manner of love the Father hath bestowed upon us, that we should be called the sons of God. Therefore, the world knoweth us not because it knew him not. Beloved, now are we the sons of God, and it doth not yet appear what we shall be. But we know that when he shall appear, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. And every man that hath this hope in him purifieth himself, even as he is pure. The blessing of the Lord be upon you. Amen.